Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to do golf code. Uh, in, the go in the game of golf, each hole has a par meaning. The average numbers of strokes a golfer is expected to make in order to sink the ball in the hole to completely play. A par, a golf course of three, with a par three, it means you should be able to hit, get the ball into the hole with three strokes. One, you strike the ball, it rolls, you strike the ball again, you rolls, you strike the ball again, it goes into the hole, that's three. Uh, you know golf swings to get the ball in the hole depending on how how far above or below par your strokes are there is a different nickname this function will be passed par and strokes argument return the correct string according to this table which lists the strokes in order of priority top highest to bottom lowest strokes one hole in one uh, less than or equal to par minus two is equal to okay the eagle birdie birdies par minus one par is par if you get par plus one, that's a bogey, double bogey, and then par greater than or equal to three uh, is uh, go home. Par and strokes will always be numeric and positive. We have added an array of all the names for your convenience. Oh, cool. They did the names here. Fascinating. Okay, golf score, uh, four and one should get hole in one. So let's actually just uh, add this to our console.log. Um, if we do golf score four and one, we should say have this should say hole in one, but however it says change me right now, which is not helpful. Now hole in one is already in the names. Uh, I wanted to just share another thing. Again, whenever I do these console logs, you can see them down here. So I'm gonna console log here. What we have is the names, right? Um, here, I'm going to comment this out just for simplicity. Now, names comes up like this. This is the, uh, the array. Um, if we were to type in type of, it'll give us the type of uh, the names, and that's an array. Uh, it's an array type of an object. So the names are like this. Now, one thing we can do with names is we can say, uh, use bracket notation to select individual ones. So zero is hole in one. One is eagle, so what we're doing is we're doing this, the second position of the names, so zero, one, two, birdie. So that's why we have birdie reading out down here. And so we can use this existing names array to make our writing the code easier. And what do I mean by that? Now let's say par and strokes will always be numeric and positive. So, um, okay, so let's figure out the hole in one, right? So let's say par is it doesn't matter, because if, if you get a hole in one, it doesn't matter what par is. So if we have the strokes is um, equal to one, we can return the names at zero. And so we should say, let's see here. I'm gonna comment this out. Yeah, so if there's a golf score with a, a par of four and we hit it, and it goes in the hole in one, we get a hole in one. Names of zero. Now you could do something like this. You could say return hole in one. And I think that if we ran the code, this would actually pass. Yeah, see this passes. But it, it passes just the same as you do if you were to just use the name, the, uh, the array selector. Cool. And so yeah. <clears throat> the uh, tests are need to just be cleared here. But again, our golf score should return hole in one. Console.log score. Oh, interesting. They don't want us to pass in. Oh, I see. Here's what's going on. I've, I've made the mistake. This variable is names. This is name. If I do names here. Okay, so it reads out hole in one. So I'm just reading this thing here. Now, the cool thing about this is you can just, the adjustment uh, in, in future encoding, it's, it's useful to just use the same thing. There's this co concept called don't repeat yourself. So it doesn't make sense to write hole in one down here when we have it already written out here. We should just return names. So what's the next thing? Well, if we are getting a golf score, if it, if, you take, if it takes you two strokes to get to the hole on a par four, we want it to say eagle. But as you can see, the... Um, what we're doing is just getting uh, change me because this code is getting evaluated here. The strokes is equal to two. If the strokes is equal to one, 
I'm going to put three equals in here because that's a good habit to start with. Initially, do triple equals because uh, it makes more sense in the long. And then, so what's going on? Now we have a strokes of two. So this is evaluating to false. So we're just returning change me. But what we want to do is say that the that we're uh, less than or equal to par minus two. So we're going to do an else if statement. And then we want to say else if um, par, no, strokes, right? Because the number of strokes is less than or equal to par minus two. And I put par minus two in brackets here, even though I probably don't need to. I should just leave it simple like this. So par minus two, if that's the case, so if strokes, which in this case is four, is less than or equal to two minus two, then we should return names at position one because this is where eagle is. And so now if we, if we were to console log this out and golf score at four two, golf score four two, if we console that log that out, it should return eagle. So if we run the tests now, we'll see that that passes again as well. Now, if you were, hadn't passed in the strokes as a conditional, say it was five two, well, what we want is birdie, not par. And so therefore, uh, we need to do uh, a ratio comparative to the, the par. So we can just keep moving along with this, else if the strokes is less than or equal to par minus one, then we're going to get a birdie, which is up here. So we're going to return names at position two. And then if we were to put this code down here, uh, four and three, we're going to return birdie. So the golf score, four and three, is equal to birdie. And then that passes this test as well. If it's four, four, we should return far. Okay, so this is interesting. Doesn't that mean that this doesn't, uh, if it's four, four. Oh, okay, yeah. So else if strokes is equal to par, we run over to return. We could say par, right? But that's not how we want to do this, even though this would get us the right answer, right? Four, four. This should return par. Oh, I'm not editing the right one. Four, four should return us par. The reason that we see this one is because we're console logging it. So four, four returns par, which would mean that this is accurate. Uh, I think if we run the test, we'll see that we're moving down. You see we're getting the green lines here. Now we've got one, four, five is, should return bogey. And that's because we haven't written that one yet, right? So else if strokes is equal to par plus one, then return uh, names three. No, zero, one, two, three, four. We want to return the names at four, and that'll give us bogey. And the reason it's not showing up right now is because we need to ha change our console log to be the right answer. So this should be bogey. You see, I made a mistake here. Strokes. We need to say strokes. And then we get the bogey. Okay, cool. Now, I don't like this again. I want to keep my code looking clean. So I'm going to say this is equal to three as well. Okay. And so um, we can just keep moving along like that. Um, else if strokes is equal to um, par plus two, we want to return names at five, right? So if it's par plus two, then we want to return double bogey, and double bogey is zero, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth position. And if we were to do par plus two down here, which is four plus four at six, we should return double bogey. And then finally, we want to say else, we could say, you can say else if strokes is equal to par plus three, Uh, we would return names at six. And if you were to say, shoot like 10 on a four, you should have. Okay, so this is saying greater than or equal to go home. And so if we make it so 
Yeah. If it's greater than or equal to, we should see it go home, which is here. Uh, this is the sixth position in the names array. Uh, yeah, I think that's great. Indeed, this actually isn't even needed. I think you'd get the same result if you were to re re remove this. Yeah, go home. So, th so that's just sort of a refactoring, right? Because this is actually unimportant because there is no number that would be uh, less than this functionality down here. This could also be less than or equal to one. Um, anything less than or equal to one will evaluate up here and anything greater than this should evaluate to go home. And so this else if statement actually isn't necessary nor is the conditional. So we can just sort of refactor our code like that. And as I'm looking at this, I think that this is right and I can just remove the change me. It's not actually important to remove the change me. I think the test will pass without it. But when you have a situation like this, this code is never going to run. So it's important to just delete that so that you keep your code base uh, a little bit cleaner. That way, people aren't confused and having to figure it out. And once they figure out there, oh, they've just got some blank code in here that they don't need. That's not the best way to be. So this is a great way to uh, do uh, the golf game. Um, I can remove the console log because that's not important. And then this would be what I would consider to be a good answer to this coding question. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.